On the first day of school this year, I had a little boy get up in my face and he screamed at me. He said, I hate school. I hate teachers. I don't want to be here. I remember taking a calm breath, finding my biggest smile, and I got down on his level and I said, I promise you're going to love school this year. If we take a look at classrooms over the past 70 years, we're seeing the same types of classrooms and the same types of learning environments spanning up to 70 years. It is my goal to continually revitalize learning and the classroom. This is a picture of my classroom this last school year. I see classrooms differently. These are some of my students. I see my students differently, and I see the way that they learn differently. The results I get are incredible. As teachers and educators, we must embrace the students of today to reimagine tomorrow. First, we must wonder how we can release the power. For as long as schools have existed, teachers have been the main source of knowledge in the classroom. Teachers are the gatekeepers for pretty much everything that happens in the classroom. We're in charge of everything that students do or don't do. As teachers, let's not misuse this power. In 2015, we have far more resources available at our fingertips than ever before. This gives us the ability, as teachers, to make our classrooms less teacher-centered and more student-centered. Let's embrace that. Teachers don't need to master every single app or every single tool before we hand it over to students. In my classroom, I like to use a students teaching students model. So I will give an app or a tool to a student. I will have them learn how to use it, and then I'll have them go teach all of the other students and myself how to use that app. <laughs> Teachers don't need to master it all. Um, let's get kids involved with projects like Genius Hour. Genius Hour is actually based on Google's 20% policy, where kids would actually get one hour a week to study things that they are passionate about, instead of telling them things that they have to learn every single day. This really gives kids ownership in their learning, and it makes it very relevant to them. This also means that lots of the time, my students are going to know more than me. That's awesome. Embrace their knowledge, and they'll embrace their learning. Second, we must wonder how we can embrace purposeful technology. Using technology just for the sake of using technology is wasteful. If it doesn't transform your classroom, or your teaching, or your learning, just skip it, don't use it. If the same project can be done using paper or pencil, it's not transforming your classroom. Always, always, always start with your purpose. If something is boring on paper, it's still gonna be boring when you put it on an iPad. Um, let me tell you what I mean by that. If I give my students a addition worksheet on paper, they are going to think it is mind-numbingly boring. They're gonna stare at me. If I take that same addition worksheet and I put it on an iPad, guess what? It's still mind-numbingly boring for them to do, okay? Boring things on paper are still boring when you put them on an iPad. Even apps have different purposes now. Some apps are skill-based and repetitive, while other apps are actually project-based. Let's turn kids loose to go create something and not just play games. If you actually have to leave your classroom to go to like a computer lab, the technology is not at the point of instruction. Let's get technology in the hands of kids when they need it and where they need it. This is a picture of a little girl in my class that I had this last school year. Her name is Milena. And Milena is following along right now with a classmate's recording of the book that she is reading. She scanned a QR code taped to the back of that book to access this recording. This app transformed my reading block. This app helped instill a love of reading and a sense of pride among my students. Not to mention my reading fluency scores improved exponentially. Third, we must wonder what my mentor once told me. He said, Kayla, don't feed the fears. Schools are still banning cell phones. Principals are still banning cell phones from teacher staff meetings. 
Schools are even building what they call these things, cell phone hotels. This is a real thing. Uh, let me tell you how this works. So when kids come to school in the morning, they check their cell phone in at the cell phone hotel. Okay? At the end of the school day, when they're leaving, they go home, they get to check their cell phone back out of the cell phone hotel. We have more technology in the palm of our hands now than what put man on the moon. Yet we're telling our students, leave your technology at home. Keep your mobile device in your locker. Are you hiding a cell phone? Did you check your cell phone into the cell phone hotel? What are we doing? <laughs> Schools in the United States are still blocking YouTube. Did you know that YouTube is the number one used search engine among students in grades 5 through 12? This is utterly incomprehensible. So much learning is lost when we block all of these resources from our students. We might think that we're protecting our kids when we keep them in this little bubble for eight hours of the school day. But guess what? These kids, they leave. They go home. They graduate. They try to get jobs. If we block all these things from them during the school day, we're not protecting them. We're actually hurting them. We need to put kids in real world, learning, authentic environments during the school day and give them the tools that they need to be successful so that we can actually protect them for a lifetime. While jumping into new technologies or social media can sometimes be scary, we need to always keep in mind that if it's right for kids, it's right. Sometimes the comfort level of teachers is less important than doing what's, than, than doing what's right for kids. My kids have never lived in a time without Wi-Fi or mobile devices. My kids have never felt the pain of T9 texting. <laughs> They've never had to experience dial-up internet. <laughs> Technology is the language today's students speak. Furthermore, as educators, it is now our job to be champions of digital citizenship. 93% of employers now use social media in some way to either recruit or hire employees. That means if our students leave us with a neutral or a negative digital footprint, they have just a 7% chance of getting a job. 7%. My friend George Kuros challenges us as educators to make sure that every single high school graduate is well Googled. I challenge you to Google yourself. Go have your students Google themselves and like what they see. What does your digital footprint say about you? We must wonder as educators how we can make global connections. It is now our job to make sure that we are connecting our students globally. This probably sounds a lot harder than it actually is. With now with just a few clicks, you can do a virtual field trip to the Smithsonian Institute. Or you can bring your students on a virtual field trip to the Sistine Chapel. Learning is no longer limited to just our classroom, or our school, or our state, or even our planet. You can now take your students on a virtual field trip to the stratosphere. Do a Google Hangout with a classroom in Hong Kong to expose your kids to new and different cultures. Give them the practice that they're going to need with the real life speaking and listening skills of the 21st century. Set up a classroom Twitter account. Have your kids tweet with experts from around the world, like Brad Wade or Jen Jones. Have your kids tweet with other classrooms around the world to share and compare their learning. Don't be the four walls that hold your kids back or limit their learning. Break down those walls and go global. We must wonder how we can reinvent the skills of today. While standardized tests might have a valid place in our schools, we need to start assessing teachers and students in other ways too. Assess my students on their creativity, collaboration, critical thinking, and communication skills. Assess my kids on their grit. And how, they're and how they're able to find success through failure. 
assess my kids on their digital literacy skills and other skills that they're gonna need when they graduate to be successful employees, citizens, and innovative individuals in the real world. Assess me on how well I prepared my kids for their future when they leave my classroom. While difficult to assess, this should serve as our daily mission. It should guide our teaching and learning values, a compass for a true educational north. Okay, everyone, here's my challenge for you. We are now 15 years into the 21st century. We need to make sure that our schools and our classrooms are as engaging, responsive, and dynamic as the world around us. Here's my, do you remember that little boy that I talked about at the beginning? Uh, well, his name is Christian. He came to me that first day of school literally wanting to be any place else in the world but my classroom. Well, on the last day of school, Christian was crying out of control. He was refusing to leave my classroom. <laughs> Why? Because he didn't want to let go of our very last hug. Pretty different than the first day of school. For the first time in his life, Christian loved school. He loved coming to school. He loved learning. He loved everything about being with me. I saw amazing growth, not only in Christian, but in the rest of my students as well. What doesn't often get talked about, though, is the impact that my students have made on my life. Every day, my students taught me about humility and being a real and authentic person. They taught me to have tons of patience. <laughs> they taught me to have a sense of humor and be able to laugh at myself, and so many more things. Technology changes. The laws that we have will change. The standards that we use to assess our kids are going to change again. But one thing remains constant through time. Relationships between students and passionate teachers will always be the foundation of successful classrooms. Thank you.